and I always have to watch the screen. We're live. Okay, very good. What's up, guys? Drew here, thatanxietyguy.com, back again with Billy from Anxiety United in the UK. Hello. What's up, Bill? So we are going to continue our Anxiety 101 series this morning, and we're going to do... We're going through an article that I wrote many years ago. I will link the article in the video description on the website, wherever you're watching, so you can go check it out. And uh, we're going through an Anxiety 101 article that I wrote many moons ago. And we're just kind of going section by section. Today, we're going to talk about symptoms, which is a popular topic, of course. But not so much talking about symptoms, talking about how to not react to symptoms. And that reacting to symptoms is one of the major things that fuels the cycle and keeps things kind of upside down for you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So... Like I said, you can read through the article, follow the link. We'll link that over there. But Billy, and his infinite wisdom, why don't you talk about the poll you did on Anxiety United <clears throat> video. And we'll link Billy's video, too. So it's about, I don't know, it's probably about four, three or four years ago, maybe. No, it weren't. I'm telling a lie. The poll was about three or four years ago. The video was about a year ago. But we, we basically did a poll on the, the top symptoms that affect people. So... I made a list of symptoms that were popular amongst all sufferers, or a lot. And just told them to pick the one that was most prevalent for them, the one that really affected them. And we just left the list. And we had over 5,000 votes in the poll. And then I just collated the results, created a video, just putting them in order as we went. And we've got a list of the 10. And I don't know if we want to run through the list and just maybe touch on why they might happen. But we, we don't want to spend too much time on actually focusing on why symptoms are happening because we're trying not to focus on them, aren't we? We're trying to get away from the reaction and they're not important but from the list the the tenth one on there was headaches should i just run through the list with yeah them? let's run through the list and then yeah, we'll okay so break them down we've got headaches bit. we've got dizziness we've got jelly legs or weak legs we've got heart palpitations sweating i feel like i'm doing a, like a chart here it's not <laughs> charts we've got tension and muscle aches shortness of breath digestive problems which covers all kinds of nausea diarrhea all the usual yeah uh, rapid heartbeat and the, the number one which was chosen by i think the percentage was like crazy off the scale and that was fatigue and exhaustion being the most common symptom that affected people that's interesting i think that probably is not so much a symptom of a panic attack but anxiety in general yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. the after oh, effects of stress. And, exactly. Mm, so if you're mm. always anxious and always at this you know, high level, <clears throat> it's natural to kind of feel worn out and beat up mm-hmm. all the time. So that makes sense. Mm. So I think when we go through – and that was a, it was a pretty decent poll on your website. And then Billy has, Billy has a video that talks about these, these top ten symptoms too. We'll link that so you can go watch it. And the reason why we want to go over these symptoms, and we'll talk about a few of them and maybe why they happen for a little bit of reassurance, mm. but it's more. this is not so much about comparing symptoms and really dissecting why we have jelly legs or weak legs. It's about learning to acknowledge how you feel physically, acknowledging the symptoms, and then moving on and not focusing mm-hmm. on them. So we're going we're gonna to talk about them a little bit, which is focusing, but really what this video is all about is trying to learn to not react to them and not focus on them. That's the point. Yeah. So we wind up in a situation where we start to feel these things. And we'll use these 10 as a pretty good example. I'm sure that there's there's a hundred others that, you know, if you're watching the video or listening to this podcast, I'm sure you can have, mm. you can probably mm. throw 20 other symptoms into this mix. And that's the problem, isn't it? It is. We, we'll always miss something and somebody will then think, oh God, this must be something else because they haven't mentioned, Yeah. you know, you do get that quite often. I mean, but that's not the case. We could sit here all day. We could. We could we could actually do we could probably do a year worth of videos, just yeah. one vid- yeah. one symptom per video and just mm-hmm. keep going. Mm-hmm. So maybe what we should do is is talk about that a little bit. You know, I, I think we one of the, the most popular topic that I think you would agree with this that I see online where people gather to talk about anxiety and panic and things like that is is comparing and checking symptoms. Yeah, definitely. Right. Is by far medication is also a big one. What can I take? What can I swallow? But mm-hmm. I think does anybody feel is the number one question. Does anybody get yeah. this? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I need to know that I'm not the only one. Exactly. And I think it's pretty mm. normal. It's pretty normal. People, we want validation for the way we feel. We want reassurance that we, we don't have some special form of anxiety or some real mm. disease that's going to kill us. So I think that makes sense. You know, you want some reassurance and you want to think about, at, especially at first, when you first go down this road, you really, mm. really focus on your symptoms and how you feel physically a lot. And that's pretty normal. Uh, but once you've started to understand the explanation behind them 
and, and you also hear that, hey, there's 10,000 other people within an arm's reach that also get jelly legs or weak legs. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Once we understand those facts, if you will, about the symptoms, then it's time to learn to just not, not react to them. Right. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So if we go, we talked about maybe going through a few of these to just sort of explain them away. And I think we can use that as sort of an example of how you go through this process, you know? So, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, we could maybe talk about the numbers, numbness, yeah, numbness and tingling, which is a big okay. symptom for a lot of people. So let's kind of walk it, walk everybody through this. So you're experiencing anxiety or panic and you're new to this game. And when it happens, you start to experience num- numbness in your fingers or toes or tingling or, your nose can tingle. Have you ever had that where your nose and your lips are tingly? I had this exact same thing on Saturday night. Sure. It's very, very common. So Yeah, yeah. It was what do we do? Right? The first time it ever happens, it's freaking terrifying. You may wind mm-hmm. up in a hospital, you think you're dying, and perfectly mm-hmm. normal. Everybody goes through that phase. But when it happens again and again and again, what do we do? So what causes the nimble the first thing you probably wind up doing is you'll go to forums, you'll reach out to other people and say, Who else has this? Search. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Who else has this? And then you're likely to find a million people who say, I have it too. And then Mm -hmm. you'll also start to find explanations as to why you have numbness. I cannot say the word numb today. (laughs) Numbness and tingling in your extremities or your your nose, your lips, your cheeks. Mm -hmm. The explanation for that is is the carbon carbon dioxide levels in your blood. That's your breathing. So Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I learned that the hard way during a wicked panic attack like my sophomore year at at college. And like a long time ago. I'm not going to say the the year, but... um, and I, I remember I, my nose started tingling, my lips started tingling, my hands and feet started to go numb. Mm-hmm. My, my hands actually kind of, you could see the camera, kind of wound up in this position, like in a claw. And my, yeah, yeah, my yeah. toes cramped up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I thought for sure I was done for. And uh, mm-hmm. we can explain that away because that is over breathing. So when, mm-hmm. you're, when you're doing that or when you're doing and you're sighing over and over to try and relax... Um, mm. you're over breathing and when your carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide levels in your blood get screwed up, you're hyperventilating. And that is a common symptom of hyperventilation. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. 100% predictable. That is what your body will do if you over breathe, which so many of us do when we get into a panic situation. And it's a simple explana- explanation. Right. And you're probably crying across the board. Yeah. Being far off. Simple explanations for pretty much all of the symptoms and the sensations. And Hmm. Um, I just got an odd message. Uh, yeah, it's true. So let's follow num- numbness and tingling through to the logical conclusion that we're trying to get to here, which is not reacting to it. So mm-hmm. now you've experienced it, even if it's new to you, you search it out, find out that other people have it on the internet. You find out what the explanation is for numbness and tingling. And in fact, if it were to continue to happen and you would keep over breathing, you would just pass out from hyperventilation and it would go mm-hmm. away and you'd be perfectly mm-hmm. safe. Mm-hmm. So now what do we do next? So now you're getting into an anxiety situation. What do you do? Well, the no, thing for no me usually. Tingle. Oh yeah, yeah. The thing for me though is though once I've seen the the reassurance or read and find the explanation, right. a couple of days will pass and then it will just move on to something else and we'll go again, and the cycle continues. Okay. I think that's people get so frustrated with. You'll have one certain symptom. You'll read about it. Maybe it will just pass in time naturally as it would anyway. Hmm. And then you'll get onto something else. But then when you come, because it's like a loop and you come back to the tingling fingers next time you have this. Yes. But because you, you've now learned something else, you forgot what caused this and you just go again. That's, That's a, what it does for me. That's a really good point. That's a really good point. So for you, once you kind of learn what it is and you've got that reassurance and you can explain it, you, mm. you stop reacting to that, but you move on to the next the next yeah yeah that's how list. it feels okay i have i've just got to throw this out because i, I know i'll forget it but sure. during the last like the last three weeks i've been doing those who watched the video previously will see that i was caring for my dad when he came out of hospital so i've been going to his house like three four times a day getting out of the house spending hours at his at a time and not thinking about myself but the last week has been a bit more difficult like i've been doing his shopping and We've been eating a few takeaways, going through drive throughs and that. But the thing that I've been using in my head is just telling myself that I love whatever it is that's happening. So, I, example, I was sitting in the drive through queue at McDonald's the other day and I was feeling the weird sensations that I get when I'm sitting there. And I just said to myself, I love feeling like this. And it, it really, it was weird. The power that it gave me just because I, oh, I love this. I love feeling like this. And any symptom that I've come across... For the last like week, I've just thought to myself, ah, oh, 
I love it when this happens. And it's really made a a complete difference on the way that I've sort of carried it over. I've not thought about it. I've not dwelt on it. I've just, like, accepted and loved feeling like this, whatever it's been. That weird. Uh, that's probably a bit. No, that's that's actually really, really excellent because mm. if we follow through the numbness and tingling to the conclusion here, which is to learn to let it be there and not react. Mm. You, you mm. can't. The, what we're talking about here is not going into oh my god mode. Oh my god, I'm tingling. Yeah, yeah. Right. So yeah. okay, you notice it. My nose is tingling. My lips are tingling. Move on. You know, my philosophy would generally be. You know, you just have to let it just let it be there and don't react. Don't engage mm. in an inner dialogue. Don't yeah, start yeah. talking about it with yourself. Don't start analyzing it. Don't wish it away. Don't don't white knuckle through it. Oh, my God, I can't wait till this is over. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's just that's let exactly it be there. The opposite. Yeah. Right. And, and I think but but your strategy I'm that you've come up with. Welcome. Right. Come on in. It's just as yeah. good. So for me, mm. it's kind of a do I try and do nothing and just let it go. But yours is good is really good. Like, bring, mm. come on, bring it. Bring it. Yeah, yeah, whatever. And there's, Love I, it. I have used that from time to time. And recently I just used that. I know there's somebody probably listening or watching right now that knows it has seen me do that. Um, right. It's almost an anger thing for me. When I use that, mm. I get into that mode where it's like, that is, that is all you got. Like, you know, you've got to bring yeah, more yeah. than, don't be bringing yeah, that yeah. weak shit into my house. So mm. like I try and get mm. angry at it and ask for more. And you're right. It tends to almost diffuse things really quickly. The so, only problem that I have, like, it, I was, I went to the shop with my wife, like, a couple of days later. Right. We're walking down the shop, and I'm feeling a bit edgy, and she's like, come on, you love this. And I'm like, <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> yeah. I can say it, you can't. Time and a place. <laughs> no, no, I'll, I'll, say, I'll say when I love something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is, that's really funny, but that that's good. So we're talking about not reacting to symptoms. Mm. And, you know, I didn't expect to take this twist, but in a way, there can be a positive reaction, too. I was just going to say, yeah, just don't react negatively, then. Exactly. Don't mm. don't react in fear. So you're gonna, mm. either going to react with complete and utter indifference, and you have to learn how to mm. do that, or mm. you're going to react like you did, confront it, you know, in mm. some cases. Mm. I, love, I love feeling like this. I love yeah. when I can't feel my lips. It's awesome. <laughs> so, <laughs> some people pay to feel like that you know okay yeah. so let's talk about that for just a quick second that is true that no, is, true. It is very some people pay to feel like that mm-hmm. so you know lightheaded a little bit dizzy a little tingly floaty unsteady there are people who pay good money to buy substances yeah. that make them feel like that on purpose mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. That, that's a pretty good perspective right there that it's all about how we interpret things yeah yeah so one of the things that I wrote in the article, if you're reading through, is uh, – I mean, I gave a couple of examples. So if, if you're – let's talk about short of breath because that, that's a big mm-hmm, one. Mm-hmm. So if you're feeling short of breath, just just let it happen, right? So there's a couple of ways that you can go you – know, and this is just an example. Just I, I, In the article, I say just let it happen. Don't run to an open window you know, to try and get air into your lungs or standing in front of a fan to try and force air into your face. I, I've done all of those things. Yeah. What, what I tend to do with shortness of breath is – it's hard to ignore feeling like you can't breathe. It's mm. prob- probably mm. one of the hardest things to ignore because survival yeah, yeah. is what it is. But what I'll usually try and do is just stop for a second and actually take a breath, like a belly breath, you know, deep into mm-hmm. my belly, hold yeah. it, exhale. One breath into it, I could tell myself, I- I- I'm in perfect control of my breathing right now. So mm-hmm. I might not be breathing very effectively because I'm, I'm in freak out mode, but I can control this when I want to. Mm. And then, then I move on. So... With tightness of the chest, the same situation. I used to find I would be poking and prodding and trying to like find different positions that it would go away yeah, yeah. and they get all kinds yeah. of crazy stuff. And what I was doing is trying to escape it and I was giving it a whole lot more power than it used to be. And the same thing mm. with the hot and cold for me. Yeah, I yeah. used to get hot and cold flashes. The same situation. If I get really cold, I would run to the air conditioning duct or a fan or, you know, I'd want to take my shirt off or something like that. And those are mm. rituals that survived for a long time for no good reason. It's mm. still, they're still in my repertoire. But same situation, you have to learn to just be hot or just just be cold. There was one for me the other day. I, my daughter had a bike for her birthday, and I was putting it all together, like fixing the seat and the handlebars and stuff. And when I'd finished it, my legs just felt so much. It was so weird. I just felt like I could barely stand. My legs felt really weak. Interesting. But then, yeah, I, I tried not to give it too much attention, but this is, again, reacting in a positive way. I wow. stood here and just started doing squats and stuff just to prove to myself yes. that my legs were fine. And then after I'd done that, I don't know whether I just hadn't woke up properly or whatever, but I just convinced myself that they were fine. Yeah. They still had strength. So I am kind of reacting. I don't know. 
but I'm trying to do it in a positive way just to confirm to myself that I'm in no danger with back to that. It's yes. Uh, reassuring that I think statement in my mind. That reaction, that is a very positive reaction because it's the mm. same reaction that if you're working with a behavioral therapist who's helping you with CBT, cognitive behavior therapy, those are exactly the things that that therapist would ask yeah. us to do. So, because mm -hmm. you, really you're challenging your thought, like, okay, my legs, yeah, feel, yeah. my legs feel slightly different than they did five minutes ago. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm worried about this. I'm afraid of that. So I need to challenge that thought. And how can I challenge it? Well, I'll prove to myself that my legs are perfectly yeah, yeah, fine by yeah. doing some squats. Yeah. So it's mm -hmm. really solid. Or I feel like I can't breathe, but hang on, let me take an actual breath. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can breathe. I, I'm fine. So rather than, rather than just using the reaffirming statement in your mind, you're actually performing an action. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and so mm -hmm. sometimes that's, that's good. Like, you mm -hmm. know, um, I have had to say to myself many times, like, hey, look, I'm still standing upright. Or, look, or, yeah, or I'll, yeah. I'll walk across the floor very slowly and deliberately and say, look, I'm in perfect control of what's happening right now. Yeah, yeah. You know, mm. let, let me pick up this phone, spin it around, and put it down. Look, I, I totally – but there's that fine line between challenging your thoughts through action mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and distracting yourself. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. But, so why, well, do we, yeah. why do we not want to react to symptoms, really? What's, what, when well, we react wait, to them, what happens? We're empowering them, aren't we? We're making them believe, and we're also – making ourselves believe that whatever we're doing to stop it or to distract is going to keep it away forever i guess yes that's true but that's 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 not the case is it? It's, it, it and they're not important that's the the main thing is that they're they're normal physiological responses right. to stress or adrenaline or whatever it is sure it's it's normal and everybody would experience it and i think you know when you've wound up in a doctor's office or a hospital emergency room with a panic attack and how many times have the, you know, a nurses and doctors look at you, you figure you're one heartbeat away from the Grim Reaper and, and yeah. they're, they're all looking at you like it's just mm. Tuesday to them. Yeah, there's, there's no, mm. no urgency mm. at all. You just, yeah, yeah. you know, we've seen this a million times. Your body's supposed to be doing this right now. So, you know, mm. um, in a way, yes. And so when we, when we pay them heed or we react negatively, oh my God, try and escape them, try and fix them, try and get away from them. You're right. We're we're, re so, we're we're reinforcing a mistaken belief here. What a question! Yeah. Do you think Do you think that people that suffer with anxiety and that they feel the sensations more, or is it just because we're more aware? So, is the the rapid heart? If I have a freak out because a car is coming towards me, am I going to feel worse symptoms than a person that's never had panic and a car is coming towards them, or is it going to be exactly the same? It's just that because I'm thinking about it so much that it would feel worse to me or what? I think... I suppose the body's response is the body's response, isn't it, I guess? Right. Whoever. So, yeah. and I try to think about that all the time. So, mm -hmm. you know, if my heart is beating at 140 beats per minute, it's the same as your heart beating 140 beats per minute. It's the yeah, same yeah. exact thing. Mm -hmm. I think... I think... You know what? I used to have, and I still have them sometimes. If I let myself get run down, I, I get an irregular heartbeat. It's completely mm -hmm. benign. It's perfectly fine. Yeah, yeah. They call uh, PVCs, benign PVCs, and every mm -hmm. human heart has PVCs from time to time. And when it was explained to me by... That. Yeah, <laughs> it was explained to me by <laughs> multiple cardiologists way back in the day. It's a mm -hmm. normal part of a healthy heart. We all have mm -hmm. them. You just don't always feel them. But yeah. when I'm run down, when I'm anxious, when I'm completely focused on my own body, I feel them like, yeah, like yeah. acutely. Whereas mm. somebody else, when I when I describe it, will say, "Oh yeah, sometimes like I, I feel like I have to cough. It's like a little flutter. That's all. That. That's that's the only thing they think. Like, oh yeah, once in a while that happens to me. They don't think about it at all. Mm. Mm. And um, so I think that we may we experience our symptoms more severely than other people, normal people. Mm. Are experiencing mm. those same sensations because we are so focused on them. I, that's my yeah, theory. It's I, the awareness. Yes, I don't know if they're any more severe. A, a human heart beats the way a human heart beats. You know, mm. adrenaline is adrenaline. Mm. There's not that much variation in how our bodies react, mm. really. Mm. So I just think when we focus on them, we we magnify them in our head. And that's perhaps where the the problem with the safety stuff and the distraction and focusing so much. Sure. When we make when we make them seem so much. Or we're so aware and they just become right. everything. Your whole focus is symptom focused. It's just everything. It, it is. And, so and the, the key is to lose the reactions to those symptoms and just get away from it. 
And, and in certain ways, decouple the symptoms in, in a way. They're not, the symptoms themselves are not the disorder. And I, we talked about this last time. Yeah, yeah, you made way. that. Yeah, yeah, you made that point and it's spot on. They are not. So when you have a mm-hmm. racing heart or weak legs or you're dizzy or depersonalized all the time or, or any of the on our list here, we're shaking through mm-hmm. clearing, that sort of stuff. That doesn't, that's not your anxiety. Those are symptoms or manifestations of the anxiety. Yeah, yeah but exactly. That's not the disorder. So I try mm-hmm. and decouple them and think like, well, if somebody on the side of the road just had a, a narrow escape, they almost had a horrific car accident. They may be sitting in their car right now with their heart pounding and, and they're yeah. sweating and they're all keyed up and they're nervous. And that person is feeling the same exact things that I might be feeling right now, but they, they're not afraid of that. Mm-hmm. They're not mm-hmm. afraid of that. They, they're just fine. My heart's supposed to be beating right now. It's nothing. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, they're more concerned with the fact that they almost get hit by a, a you know, a giant truck. A lorry. But then to, to be fair, if you'd nearly been hit by the truck, you would be probably thinking the same way they had, because I find when I'm yes. in a situation that's sort of beyond your control, yep. you deal with it so much better. And suddenly you become normal in a way. Yeah, right? yeah. Like, really oh, yeah, weird. wow, that was a really close call. I almost got slammed into the yeah. side of the road by this giant truck. Mm. Mm. And, and, you know, I'll feel anxious and my heart might be racing, but there's no yeah, anxiety yeah. involved in that. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, so it's, you're not you're not standing there thinking, "Oh God, here we go again." You're thinking, "Geez, that was close." Right, and and you're really focused mm. outward onto the event mm. that caused mm. the problem to begin with. So, yeah, there's a lot to that. So, mm. let's talk about how because we're we're getting on 21 minutes now. Um, <laughs> I know we can we can ramble you and me. So let's oh, talk yes. about how to start ignoring your symptoms. Your, your solution is, is pretty good. I like it. Like the the positive reaction, challenge it, accept it. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to make it sort of a thing where I'm not constantly sitting there saying, oh, I love this, love this. You know, I'm just saying as soon as it happens or as soon as it enters my head, I just use it and then I just get rid of it sort of thing. So I'm not using it as a a distraction. It's not, I'm not sitting there saying, oh, I love this, love this. Yeah. And constantly thinking about it, I'm just saying it and moving on with it. So that's what's working for me at the moment. Well, that's not bad. I think, um, you know, the goal here is to acknowledge how you feel. Like, even if Mm -hmm. you were not taking that active approach like you are, you're going to acknowledge it. "Uh, My heart's racing. And that's it. So you you might take it another way. Yep, my heart's racing. I love feeling this way. And that's it. And now you move on. But Mm -hmm. the way we do this is with our coping techniques that we talked about. I think we already Mm -hmm. did coping Mm -hmm. techniques. The breathing, relaxation, clearing your mind. I, I believe we talked about that. A while ago, I used right? it. I used it on Saturday night. I'd been at my dad's and came home, and I was hungry and just felt out of sorts. And I just took myself upstairs, lay on the bed for like five minutes. I didn't have any plan to come back downstairs or to do anything. I hadn't eaten at that point, and that's something with me. Like when I'm hungry, I start getting sensations. It's weird, but that's yeah. another day. But I just lay there for five minutes, cleared my mind, just regulated my breathing. And then I was up and I came back downstairs and everything was absolutely fine. So rather than spending two hours freaking and then probably ending up doing exactly the same thing, just chilling out for five minutes. Right. But doing doing that straight away, even when I was I could feel it building sort of thing, I yeah. did it straight away and then it was done. And there was no panic and I just carried on. I think that's great. And that, that's an illustration of... You pop upstairs, lay down, and it sometimes is the hardest thing to do because what you're basically saying is, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. not going to move, yeah. I'm not going to pace, mm-hmm. I'm not going to run, I'm not going to fidget, I'm not going to... When, mm-hmm. you, when you do that, you lay yourself horizontal, close your eyes, yeah, yeah. you mm-hmm. have no choice but to be in those symptoms. They're just going to be there. Yeah, yeah. And that is super valuable to learn how to do that and, mm-hmm. and just mm-hmm. breathe and just let them wash over you. I weren't sure whether that was sort of being defeated, though. Like, should I have just sat downstairs and just let it go and let the panic come over. But I, I don't know whether like that's a tough one to call. I don't, I would not call that being defeated at all. I would call mm. that progress. Cause I did. Yeah. I did do something to react to them. But the thing that I did, I don't know. The best way I could, I could answer that would be when I had to first learn how to do these things, I would have a certain, I'd have to, you know, try and find a quiet spot away from people. Mm. I, I might need mm. lower light. There were a lot of requirements for me able to, to do this. But as I got better at doing it, like yeah, I, I could be having wig. a wicked yeah. panic attack right now and you would have no mm-hmm. idea. So, yeah, yeah. so that day, the more, exactly. The more, yeah, the more that you do that and learn yep. how to get in that mindset. That, you could do it yeah. anywhere. Yeah. So, so for you're learning the skill or perfecting it. So now you did it upstairs mm. lying down in your bedroom. But 
you know, if you do it enough, you'll be able to do it sitting in a chair in your kitchen. Then you'll yeah, be able yeah. to do it in your car yeah. or in the supermarket. It won't matter. Mm. So, no, not a defeat at all. A step forward, yeah, yeah. I would say. No, when you say it like that, it's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, learn, anyway. Learn what works. Yeah. So, I think the bottom line here, and I feel like we've rambled a lot, but but I think we've tried to acknowledge the symptoms, understand the process that everybody goes through, go online, check to see if everybody else has it, get validated, understand what yeah. it is, explain it, and then learn to use your coping skills or an active response like you have, bring it, I love this, to mm. just let it be. Trying to mm. beat away your symptoms is is bad. That The beating away or the running from the symptoms, that's actually the disorder. Like, I'm terrified yeah, yeah, of this. Exactly. I need to save myself from this. That's the disorder. So and that is anxiety. Yeah. Yeah. Just, you're, you're becoming anxious about something else as well as not being able to go out of the house or whatever it is. Yeah. You're now scared about going out of the house or and, sitting at home being dizzy or. Right. Yeah. Because in the end, being scared to go out of the house is all about how you might feel when you go out of the house. Mm-hmm. If I go out of the house, mm-hmm. I might get dizzy. So I can't go, mm-hmm. you know. So, yeah, once we learn to not react to them and just let them be there, we've taken the power away. And when you don't feel – when you don't fear how you feel physically anymore, you make a huge – a giant, giant leap forward. Mm. Because I think we have to acknowledge before we wrap it up, I think the difference between saying, like, for instance, I'm afraid to leave my house or I'm afraid to go to the supermarket. If you've been in a supermarket where there was a shooting, that's a different mm. animal. You may – you have actually yeah, – you've yeah. experienced real danger in a supermarket and you're – you can quickly develop that phobia. But – when you don't want to go into the supermarket because you're afraid that your legs will wobble and you'll have to hang mm-hmm. onto the cart or that you might pass out or anything like that, that, you know, because you, you mm-hmm. don't want to go to the supermarket, not because there's danger there. It's because how you might feel. So stop being afraid yeah. of how you feel. Just just feel mm-hmm. that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so that's the case that we can't react to symptoms. That's what this one is all about. That's it. That's it. Think we need to add anything else to this one? No, just. I don't like the the search in the forums for. I know. I don't think people should do it. I think maybe if you can speak to your doctor just to get that reassurance. But going back and constantly seeking, I don't think it's not beneficial. I think once you know the answer, right? What, whatever you just gotta trust in it. Trust yourself. I think there's you know we talk about Occam's razor, right? All else being equal, the simplest explanation is usually the one, and that's a real mm-hmm. thing. That's a real scientific mm-hmm. principle, mm-hmm. or at least a logical principle. And so once you've seen a hundred other people say, "I get a headache too," or "I get tired mm-hmm. too," or "I get numb and tingly as well," well, mm-hmm. move on. So my philosophy on that is: in the beginning, everybody's going to search and Google and, yeah, yeah. and compare, yeah. and that's normal. But at some point, you have to draw a line in the sand for yourself and say, "Okay, this is my limit." I, I, I yeah, know yeah. why I'm numb. I'm not going to look at that. I'm not going to talk about yeah, that yeah. anymore. Because so, no doubt you'll probably come across one person that had something bloody serious. Right. And then that's it. Right. That's another downside of searching, like especially a Google. Right. Don't use Google. Yeah, and it's really difficult. WebMD, you know, all those things. They're good sites, but... You know, they're also trying to give you the most information possible. So to find mm-hmm. out that, you know, mm-hmm. like having to clear your throat could and also you, be something horrible. Yeah. And when you're when you're sitting there suffering with a symptom, you're going to describe it in search engines as horrific. Right. Like the whole world <laughs> is spinning and, you know, exactly. and obviously it's, it's going to come back with scary things. But if you were to really put in, I may be over over breathing. Right. Right, you know, but, but in the heat of the moment, we're not thinking about yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, mm, mm, mm. yeah, we're just thinking that we can't breathe, short of breath, can't breathe. So yeah, yeah, but you can. And after, in terms of the breath thing, after like four or five minutes of saying you can't breathe, when does the logical brain kick in and say, "Well, yeah, yeah, I have been not breathing for ten minutes." <laughs> that sounds mm. silly, right? When you say it, but I'm still able to type. Yeah. Right, I'm typing, I'm texting, I'm snapping yeah. a rubber band, I'm coloring. Like, how could I? Of course, I'm breathing. If I wasn't breathing, I wouldn't be able to do these things. So. Yeah, so the, the key here is to take the power away from the symptoms and stop reacting yeah, yeah. in fear. And once you learn how to do that, you make a huge leap. So the next mm. episode um, we're going to do is sort of accepting that there's no comfortable way to do that. And that plays into this a little bit. Like just yeah, definitely. Sit, mm. sitting with those terrifying symptoms is horrifically uncomfortable, but there's no other way. So we'll talk about that in the next episode. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's so good. I guess we'll wrap this one up because we're now going on about a half hour. Um as like usual, symptoms. right, as usual, symptoms. where symptoms, symptoms. We could talk about it for days and days and days. Mm. What do we, um, how are people going to find us? How are they going to find you, Billy? They want to know more. Oh, you're breaking up on me, dude. They can find the 
yeah, we're on uh, what's that? Twitter, twitter.com slash anxiety united. You got me? I got you now. You're back. Can you hear me? Yeah, you're back. I can hear you. <laughs> that's all right. Audio's a little out of yeah, sync, but that's Facebook, all right. Facebook, YouTube. Yeah. Yep. That's okay. It's always anxiety united. But all the or anxietynight.com. Sounds cool. I'm thinking of redoing the website. I don't like the website at the minute. I don't like the idea of the social thing. It's just not, I don't know. It's tough. It's tough to compete with Facebook. Yeah. Facebook owns social. As exactly, much as that's can. it. Yeah. I was thinking, and maybe this is completely off topic, but just like content sharing, like images and motivational stuff maybe, just for people, if they want to use it, they can. Sure. Well, you could, anybody wants to check it out, they can. Anxietyunited.com, .co.uk, either of those two. Yeah. So you can find me at, at thatanxietyguy.com. You can listen to all the podcasts there, youtube.com slash thatanxietyguy. Same thing on Twitter, Facebook, blah, blah, blah. And as always, if you have comments or questions, throw them at one or both of us. Down uh, below. I will link Billy's channel on my version of this video. I'm sure he will do the same back at me. I'll link Billy's Sorry, symptom video too, which has like a zillion views. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you it's can ridiculous. do one. By all means, add to the view count. <laughs> and uh, I guess that's it. We'll be back next time. Yes. All right, dude. I'll talk to you in a little bit.